Game Ranks presents another episode of Before You Buy, the show where we give you some gorgeous gameplay and some first impressions of the latest games that have released. This time around, we're talking about Layers of Fear. I'm not really a big Street Fighter guy, so this week I look to a spooky horror game. Why not? Layers of Fear is out for PS4, Xbox One, PC. It's actually been in early access for PC for a while, and also on Mac. This game looks very much like a game designed just for Let's Players to get scared by jump scares and freak out and yell and shout. And since the cancellation of Silent Hills and the removal of PT from the surface of the earth. I've been looking for something to really sink my teeth in. You know, horror games are all well and good. The indie horror PC scene is still better than it's ever really been, uh, but it's starting to get a little stale, you know? I don't know. So I jumped into Layers of Fear hoping that it would scratch a different type of itch, maybe feeling a little bit different than the Outlast or the Amnesia, and uh, it certainly does. The thing I think Layers of Fear does best is the fact that it's super linear and it doesn't really revolve that much on player skill. I won't say that it's a, a walking simulator, or that style game, uh, but it is very much a haunted house. To quote Max Payne, it's a linear sequence of scares. And by that, you know, there's not really too much involved. There's some light environmental puzzles where you gotta find a code and open a safe, or pick up a key and open a door, but it's not too involved. You don't have to think too hard, and for me, someone who just wanted to go through and get scared and figure out the story, that's where I think the game worked the best. Now, in terms of the scares, uh, I'd say it's a, I hate to use the overused phrase in game reviews and stuff, but a mixed bag. I'd say it's like 50-50 here, like 50% innovative, really weird, out there, cool new scares. And then the other 50% is, you know, just modern, predictable tropes, you know, similar to something like Amnesia or like all these other games out there. You know, there's a lot of like static and jump scares and stuff, but when this game goes more atmospheric, more story-based, and more tension building, that's where it really succeeds because the story is actually pretty interesting here. You're a painter in his creepy house and he actually is kind of a terrible person and he's slowly losing his mind and the game is kind of falling apart around you in a lot of different ways and he's kind of killing himself to finish this painting that's basically the only goal of the game and how you get there is essentially like a cerebral psychedelic uh, spiral into insanity and it's pretty cool it's very inspired just everything from like melting paintings to the creepy look of everything the mansion you can't really totally get a feel for the time period sometimes it feels like the 1800s Sometimes it feels like Bioshock with some really cool little swing jazz music playing. Everything about the game is a complete mystery except for the story, which is very light, but you figure it out yourself, you get an idea for the characters, and I enjoyed it. Now, this isn't going to be a game for everyone because, like I said, it is very linear, it's not very involved, and you don't have to hide from monsters. There's not really too much of a challenge here other than just going through and experiencing it. If I could, re if I could liken this game to something, I'd compare it as like almost like if Gone Home and Silent Hill's PT playable teaser had a baby. So I think that's pretty good. You know, there's jump scares and stuff, but there's a lot of really weird, creepy, innovative horror stuff in here. That of which I really appreciated. And the game does a really great job with mood and atmosphere. The look and sound design is great. I say the look is great because the visual style is great, but I played this version on PS4 and there was a lot of screen tearing and a lot of chugging of the frame rate every once in a while. So performance wise on consoles, it doesn't seem to run up to everybody's standards, but I have after a while I got used to it. So I'd say Layer of Fear, like I said, is kind of a mix here. It's a very 50-50 game. Not only 50-50 in terms of how the scares are, whether they're typical or something new you've had ever seen before. Also just in terms of the story where it's like you're either gonna get something out of this and feel satisfaction after you beat it, or you're not. It's very brief, it's very short, you know, a few hours, maybe like one long sitting you can pass through this game. And I've seen a lot of people out there saying that that makes it, it's not really replayable because you know, you know everything coming, but I just really love the haunted house vibe of just going through and experiencing everything and looking at everything that I could see myself playing this again. It's 20 bucks, I can't recommend it to everybody, but I can recommend it if you're a horror fan. If you're not like a diehard horror game fan, maybe wait till it goes on sale. But if you do stick it out and you do check out Layers of Fear, there's gonna be a couple cool little discussions Discoveries in there and a very tragic very upsetting very grotesque story that is all just very spooky So layers of fear is it the PT we've all been waiting for uh, let's talk about it in the comments I want to hear from you guys if you have been playing it whether you play this new release or you played it on early access a few months ago Let's talk about it down in the comments below I want to know guys I want to know like what was the scariest part for the game or what was your favorite part or did you see through to the end? Did you enjoy the story as much as I did even though there's not too much of it? Let's talk if you want to talk about this game Also, you can follow me on Twitter at Jake Baldino or on Facebook or Instagram wherever Let's talk about video games, but if you do like these before you buy videos 
videos, you can click the like button because that helps us out so, so much. And subscribing if you're new is a great idea because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.